As I explained earlier, during our Lenten season, we are focusing on growing in our witness about who Jesus is and how he impacts our lives as his disciples. Today, our, last week, our theme was, was comfort. Jesus is our comfort. And we heard a story about Jesus comforting a woman who was in a radiation chamber receiving radiation for breast cancer and how she was freaking out in this room and she prayed and Jesus came and was present with her and allowed her to finish her treatment um, in peace and trusting that he was there with her. Very powerful story. This week we're talking about Jesus as faithful one. And so before we dive into that, I'm wondering what does it mean to be faithful? Any ideas? Present, Present. good. What else? Dedicated. Dedicated, good. Excuse me? Unwavering, Unwavering. good, consistent. Any other thoughts? True, yes. To be faithful means to be true. To be consistent, unwavering, present, true. Those things all have to do with faithfulness. I don't know about you, but when I hear the word faithful or faithfulness, I often think of of the relationships that I'm in in my life. And in particular, the, the relationship of marriage. Faithfulness is something we talk about in marriage. And what we usually think about is that someone who is a faithful spouse or partner in a marriage does not stray into relationships with other people. So as long as you don't do that, you're being faithful. But I think there's a whole lot more to it than that. And I think we just named those things. To be present with this person who you have, who you have promised to love for the rest of your life. To be present with them in their joys and in their sorrows. To be consistent and not changeable in your presence with that person. To be true, to be able to tell the truth in love, as hard as it sometimes might be, is a a way of being faithful, would you agree? It's a little more complicated than maybe it seems on the surface. So how can we talk about Jesus as being faithful? Well, the story we heard today is a dynamic example of that. And it's interesting this, that on this day, when Peyton will be baptized into Christ and into this faith community, that this story begins with Jesus' own baptism. Jesus went to the river to be baptized by, by John the baptizer along with all kinds of other people, not because he was imperfect or sinful, he was not. But it was the very first example of Jesus being willing to enter fully into human existence. And we know from reading the Gospels and hearing the stories that in virtually everything Jesus did throughout his life, he was entering into human existence, sometimes in some very painful ways. Why would he do that? Because he is faithful. Because he came into the world as both God and fully human in order that all humanity from his time into the future might know that when we are experiencing the joys and challenges and suffering that comes with life, that he is right there with us faithfully. And it's not just an intellectual being with us. It's not that he's looking at us and saying, oh yeah, I I heard about you. I, I can imagine, I can imagine what you're feeling. No, Jesus has experienced and felt it all. Now, as soon as he's baptized, the Spirit drives him into the wilderness, this arid place where where life is hard. It is an inhospitable environment for life of any kind, unless you're a cactus or a snake. And he spends 40 days there eating nothing. Can you imagine? I can't go four hours before my stomach's growling and I'm getting hangry, right? 40 days with nothing to eat. 
Now, if any of you have ever fasted for any period of time for a spiritual discipline, you may have experienced that depriving your body of food, in fact, draws you closer to God, allows you to focus not so much on your bodily needs, but on who God is calling you to be. We don't know whether Jesus experienced that, but I would say it's a pretty good bet that he did. Because he was strengthened during that time to be the faithful servant of God, even to dying on a cross that he would have to face for the three years of his ministry. And so we heard the story in the desert at the end of the 40 days, he is famished, he's tired. I'm sure he can't wait to get back into the world and start healing and feeding and and loving God's people like they'd never been loved before. And along comes Satan. And he tempts him three times. He tempts him to, to turn a rock into a nice, warm, buttery loaf of bread. And Jesus quotes scripture Man cannot live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Get out of here, Satan. Second time, Satan shows him all the kingdoms of the world and claims, you know what? This is all mine, and I'll give it to you if you'll just bow down and worship me. And again, Jesus quotes scripture in telling Satan that he will not, he must not, he never would bow down to this force of evil. The only voice he listens to is the voice of God his Father. The third time Satan takes him up to the highest pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem, way up there, and he's overlooking everything, and Satan says, bow down, it can all be yours. And Jesus finally ends the temptation by telling Satan that he will only worship the Lord his God. Of course, then Luke adds a little interesting sentence. So Satan went away until a more opportune time. The story continues. Jesus shows amazing amazing faithfulness during this period of testing that he undergoes in the wilderness. And as a faithful savior, as a faithful son of God, he is a model for you and for me during those times in our lives when we're encountering pressures or hearing other voices that are tempting us to turn away from God, to turn away from who God created us to be, because that's really at the heart of this story about Jesus. All the temptations that the Satan put in front of Jesus all had to do with him denying who he was and is and will always be the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the one who came to show us God's love, the one who came to die so that you and I can have eternal life. Each of us has had moments in our lives when we were called upon to be faithful, but perhaps more profoundly, each of us has had moments in our lives when we felt as if we were being tested And into those moments, into that anxiety and pain and fear comes Jesus to comfort us, to be present with us, to show us his faithfulness and by showing us his faithfulness to allow us to see more clearly who we were created to be in this world. And so today I've invited Bill Patterson to come forward and tell a story about a time in his life. Would you sit in this chair, please? Tell a story in his life about a time when faithfulness of Jesus made all the difference. Well, I've always been felt close to Jesus, um, largely because he not only died for us to save us, but also because um, his faithfulness I tested because I kind of want to do things my way. 
You're kidding. I know, I know. You can't believe it. You can't believe it. I wanted to be a minister. I went, I went to seminary. That was the plan. Um, it was during um, the late 60s when things were actually more difficult than now. You think it's polarized now. It was even worse in those days during Vietnam. Different groups were arguing about rights. And the group in seminary, we were all marching for different things. And that year, the convention of the LCA, it was those days, was in Chicago. Oh, where I was. So we decided, well, the church isn't doing much, so we decided to pick at the convention. That didn't go over real well. Uh, for some strange reason, the church fathers were not happy. And the president, they, they, that day it was called a president rather than a bishop, sent one of his lackeys to the seminary and told us, don't do that again. You guys do that again, and you're, you, it'll affect what parish you get. They actually said that to us. Oh, that didn't go over well with me and a lot of the guys. Um, that time I decided, now I remember I'm 23, and of course, 23, I thought, if the world just said what I, did what I want, everything would be good. We'd have justice, all these good things, and the church wasn't shaping up. So I said, well, it's not shaping up. I'm leaving. So I boogied out of the church, out of a seminary, um, went into social work, which is also ministry. I was, I was happy to do that, but I always knew that something wasn't really finished. Um, so then um, the year moves on. The year goes up to 2007, and my son decides to get married. I uh, just retired. I uh, was a consultant with the county, Niagara County Mental Health Department, and uh, Pastor Debbie was gracious enough with Bob, of course, to in February go to Florida to do my son's wedding. It was I, a sacrifice. I know. I appreciate your sacrifice. <laughs> I really appreciate your sacrifice. Okay. And Pastor Debbie at that time said to Bill during the during the wedding, Bill, I got a job for you or something, an opportunity for you at Lord of Life. And the first thing I thought is, oh. She wants me to run one of the social programs. Oh, no, 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 no. I've done this for 30, 40 years. Uh, I know all the state regs. I don't want to deal with state regulation anymore. So I basically blew you off. That's because you weren't listening to me, well, Bill. Well, that's what I was just going to say, folks. There's a real surprise. I didn't listen. <laughs> I didn't listen at all. I said, no, Debbie, no, thanks, but no thanks. And I said to my late wife, Katie, let's go boogie. And basically, that's how it worked, right? Okay. Well, then we go on about a year later. Uh, Lord, we were in, I was in Faith Alive. And Kathy Bisnett, some of you will remember her, uh, she was the interim director of lay ministry. And she um, said to the pastor, as I understand it, she said to you, Hey, this guy knows a lot of the Bible. He knows a lot of things. He works with people. Maybe he'd be a good director of lay ministry. And you said, I already offered it to I him. He said no. To the, the jerk. Okay, <laughs> and, 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 I, and Jesus, I think, is absolutely in my life and put up with a lot, and you, you then asked me again. And, yeah, I actually, and this time, believe it or not, I actually listened. Oh, that's what you want me to do. Oh, that's what you wanted me to do. Oh, okay. That sounds really good. I, I'm really leaning toward doing this. I'll pray on it and get back to you. I then went home and said, well, I'll think about it. Um, I'm probably going to do this, although the other job was a lot more lucrative, but I'm still going to think, I thought, I'm probably going to do this. And then I got a letter from the county two days later that said, greetings, you have been terminated from your job as director of lay ministry. Uh, um, no, the, uh, Erie County Mental Erie Health. Erie County Mental Health Director Consultant. And I said, I, at that moment, I said, okay, Jesus, okay, okay, okay. It's pretty clear what the message is. It's very clear what you want me to do. You hit me over the head with a two by four, and this time I'll actually listen, and I'll do it your way. And that, of course, has been a wonderful thing for me. What, what a, um, a pleasure, an opportunity to, in my ministry, to help all you guys with your ministries. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience, and um, going full circle in my life. So I'm just so happy to be here, and. Um, and I'm so, very, very happy. So in, in a phrase or a sentence, how, why, do, why does this story speak to you of Jesus as faithful one? He's with, he's with me even though, um, even though he, he's so loving and caring and so faithful, 
Here I want to do it all my life. I want to do it my way. He's been, fa- he's been patient, faithful, and he's always been with me, and here I am. Brought you back to where you belong. Brought me back belonged. to where I need, right. where I need to be Great. and where I belong. So I'm eternally grateful. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Okay. When we talk about Jesus, we, we talk about him in three different tenses. We talk about the Jesus who was, the Jesus who is, and the Jesus who will always be. Today, in just a few moments, as water is poured and prayers are said over Peyton, she will experience the faithfulness of Jesus as her journey with him begins. Would she come to me, do you suppose, for a moment? Peyton. Oh, you can keep your binky, it's okay. <laughs> Part of being faithful sometimes means making and keeping promises. And today, as Peyton is baptized, many promises will be made to her and on her behalf. Her parents and sponsors will promise that they will continue to bring her to her new faith family, that they'll teach her all the things she needs to know about Jesus, and that they too will grow in love for Jesus along with her. The congregation will make promises that we will support her and love her, that we will teach her, and that we will learn from her. You've got things to teach us, little lady. Yes, you do. And perhaps most important is the promises that Jesus will make to Peyton today, that he begins a new journey with her today, a journey together as they discover what her God-given purpose is, and help her to live into that purpose, whatever that looks like. God also will promise today that there's no place Peyton can ever wander in her journey through life, no place where he is not already there waiting for her. And that if she wanders into some places making some not so good choices and finds herself ready to come back home to him, that he will always, always be there with his arms wide open, ready to welcome her home. And so, Jesus is faithful to us in all times and circumstances. And we rejoice as his faith, you like that, huh? As his faithfulness um, will be lived out in the life of this child who he knit together in his mother's womb, who he has been with every moment of her life, and who he promises he will continue to be with as she grows into his disciple.